interesting development interesting development with my guy brian callan do you remember in this stream i've said many and many a times how i absolutely hate and despise hate and despise sandals always have never will not sandals i feel like should only be worn in situ they should only be worn on location for instance when i went to bali a really long time ago um all i wore was sandals i had like these tether sandals these like they kind of like people call them jesus sandals but these tether sandals i would love to this day i wore them every single place that i went and it's lovely your feet get scorched you're touching the sand and have you noticed sometimes when you I don't know if you guys noticed this maybe because I paid too much attention to this because I was, you know, I used to run a lot and I used to be into kind of running physiology and form and whatnot. But a lot of runners will go to like hot climate places and basically run barefoot in the, in the sand or in the grass and whatnot. And it obviously helps to strengthen the bones and the tendons in your foot, but also it allows your feet, your toes to spread. Because when you wear regular trainers or modern trainers these days or shoes, they kind of tend to clunk your toes up together. So when you go on these hot climates, it's quite nice sometimes to put a sandal on and just let your feet breathe a little bit and let them kind of splay out. It's quite nice, that feeling, that kind of, red, you know, whatever it may be. But I just feel like living in a metropolitan city and walking around with sandals is a legit the same which is where you're walking around barefooted there's so much gunk and horridness in the air puddles there, especially here in the uk puddles um you know flipping horrible pavements and stuff it's just horrendous and i've been to la a couple of times and i know they've got many potholes everywhere and it's not you know the most um pollutant free place either so it just doesn't make any sense and then on top of that i feel like if you're gonna wear sandals wear them with an outfit that would denote wearing sandals for instance like i don't understand people who go out and wear sandals with skinny jeans like if you could put on a pair of skinny jeans you can put on a pair of shoes it's not that difficult this it's, it's two of the same so when i see brian callan rocking up to a podcast where you essentially get to make your own hours it's a job that you basically get to do kind of from the comfort of your home or the comfort of your own studio um you get to wear what you want to some level of degree. Making coming in with the sandals, it feels like he's making no effort, like zero effort. Like he's decided just to kind of do the bare minimum and just trudge in from home. Okay, let's regard like if you're wearing sandals to, to record a podcast, why not just wear flipping pajamas? Why not just do that? Why not just wear pajamas? Please tell me. And that's what annoys me about it. And just in general, just seeing somebody's foot dangle and dance in front of you watching the podcast is just so distracting. And I keep going back to that story of Bert Kreischer, somebody that I kind of, you know, have a love-hate relationship with in terms of his content, but I still think he's one of the greatest interviewers out there in terms of comedians. He has a tendency back in the day where he used to wear sandals and because he'd be sitting on his chair a lot, he start picking in the middle of his feet and his toes and flicking all the, you know, in-between gunk and fluff off while you're watching it and it just turned you off and you want to just not watch the content anymore so brian cannon was promoting this horrendous horrible overpriced garbage sandals company called toeholds that was for some reason selling sandals for 500 dollars plus maximum i saw like a thousand dollars these sandals and because they were allegedly made out of materials you know from like you know unfortunately dead animals that they killed in flipping jungles of africa somewhere right who knows but regardless really horrendous sandals and the brand was called toeholds and for some reason he was involved in it and started promoting and shilling it and shell you know and shilling it really hard and then decided to go on rogan of all places after not being on rogan forever imagine brian can have, hasn't been on rogan for a long time on his own um obviously went through that rape allegation stuff joe rogan basically iced him out in terms of communicating with him and he goes back onto rogan and the first thing that he's doing to kind of push really hard is not really his special it's mostly the sandals to the point where you know joe was like fuck shut up about those fucking shit sandals which i could imagine wasn't probably the best things in terms of advertising those sandals but it looks like everything has changed now everything has changed now with brian callan and that sandal company and he announced it uh just the other day on the fire and the kid podcast latest episode i think no episode number 870 so let's hear brian callan explain what his situation is now with his investment in toeholds count in the toehold sandals company i went to high school in massachusetts and then oh, wow. DC. i went to college in dc but talk to me about beverly hills high school in the 80s all right let's take a little break um guys real quick uh as far as toehold is concerned <laughs> um that's a company that i was involved with not any more not because i don't believe in the <laughs> um, uh, um uh the first thing he's doing and i only know this because of dsp so big up dark side phil big up phil brunel the biggest scammer 
on the internet that's ever existed, right? A person that's basically, you know, survived entire time his live streaming career, 14 years of kind hand creation by basically praying and manipulating dents, right? People who are, you know, basically don't know any better and taking advantage of them and bleeding them dry for tips, lying about the ability to paying and spending it and wasting it on WWE champions. So like horrible, horrible person. He lies all the time. And one thing that he does when he lies all the time, he gets like boot, he gets like he, he has bug eyes and his eyes start dancing around the room. He can't focus on a camera. He does it anyway, but it gets more when he's lying. He gets bug eyed and he's outside dancing. So one thing I've kind of learned uh, that's a tell of his. So I can kind of see a lot of people when they're lying or they're not sure on something or they're shy or they're feeling insecure. But this to me feels like a stone cold lie because he starts off straight away looking down. Like he's not even looking up the moment he starts this. He starts straight away looking down. Look at it! Look! 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 Look at his head. And um, that's a company that I was guys. Again. Real quick, uh, as far as Toehold is concerned, um, that's a company that I was involved with, not anymore, not because I don't believe in the company, not because I had a falling out. I love uh, Ag, the founder. He's still a dear friend. It's I still believe in the company. I'm going to post this video of Brian Shaw not being able <laughs> to pull them apart. Uh, it's just that I stopped being able to, to add value. I just didn't know where I was going to add value anymore. I was too busy. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of that statement he made after he got accused of rape. Where he's like, I'm telling you, I didn't rape the guy. Like, it's, it was so weird that he thinks like staring at the camera and like raising his voice is somehow, you know, a, an example of him telling the truth. And he did the same thing as well when, um, when all the fans got at him for flipping, throwing the Leo under the bus when he got accused of rape or no diddling and then obviously the next week brian got accused of what he used to got accused of and he's like i didn't you know we hardly hang out that whole hand hang out thing is similar sort of stuff and uh they they were doing great things with the company and i was just like i don't know how i'm gonna add to this and i don't have time to because <laughs> i'm doing all these other things so that <laughs> what are you doing brian what other things are you doing come on you're doing that podcast with sam Trippett. i don't even sure if it's still on is it still on i don't really know um he's doing this show he does some appearances these days in comedy. Hollywood career is over. That's done for. The moment he gets announced into a movie or something, all those articles about him are whether people are going to spring up again. Because in my head, I'm thinking to myself, because Hollywood, again, I don't like cancel culture. I think in general, the fans should decide if you get canceled. But Hollywood people, executive and networks are super tw twitchy about people that have been, uh, have been canceled. And if Army Hammer, a really attractive, good-looking stud of a human, is finding it hard to come back into, you know, acting in Hollywood because of, you know, him being accused of being a cannibal and all that sort of stuff, right? It's that sexual kink thing that he has. If he's finding it hard to get back into Hollywood and be uncancelled, I don't think Brian Callen stands a chance, in my opinion. Now, if he does make it back, congrats to him. But this idea that he's busy and doing many things is just uh, a fabrication. That's really what happened. Um, uh, so I divested from that, but I'm still a supporter and I still wear their <laughs> products because they're awesome. Yeah, because you got them for free. Of course you're going to wear free sandals. Like after I got flipping let go from Nike, I didn't throw away all my Nike shoes, did I? Because I got them for free. They're quite nice, actually. I'm going to keep these Nikes. Fuck Nike, but I'm going to keep these Nikes. <laughs> so of course you're going to keep these toe holds. Come on. And, uh, so that's 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 what I wanted to say in case anybody had any thoughts about that. Um, oh. <laughs> I find it hilarious. Number one, because let's keep let's keep his face here, because it looks like he's you know he's uh doing the things that he shouldn't be doing. But number one, I feel like I feel like this. Let's let's just go this way. I find it really odd that he's commenting commentate commenting on this anyway. A very you know kind of niche sandals brand that only certain people like myself who care about these guys actually know about. He's announcing that he's not part of that you know he's not invested in that company anymore on the fire and the kid he's not doing his own social media platform and just kind of posting a little video quickly or a post he's announcing on a podcast i find that strange and the reason why i find that strange is because i think it's telling because it probably means the founder whoever his business partner is probably told him to make it known publicly that he's not involved because brian's association with the brand is actually hurting them that's my theory I've got a feeling that whoever set up toe holes, as much as I hate sandals and, you know, paying a thousand pounds for sandals is flipping ridiculous. Whoever, whoever runs that company is probably legit 
that's like a proper business person who's basically building his brand to a point where he wants to scale it someone maybe buy it out or he's trying to you know just build it up he wants to maybe make he maybe wants to make it the next all birds or something right this is a legit business guy who kind of likes podcasts too probably maybe he's a former navy seal or something i don't know let's just imagine maybe he does jujitsu <clears throat> and he just wanted to get involved with those guys because he felt like it would be a good way to kind of get involved and kind of get some free promo or get some you know some good marketing and branding done maybe he thought brian can would be a good way to get to rogan to get to burt kreischer all these guys that wear sandals and stuff right the kind of that kind of scene of older dudes and you know guys that have a lot of disposable income they might appeal to other older dudes that have disposable income that's what i think happened but quickly he realized that Brian Callan's association with toeholds, although it was good and it got them a lot of brand exposure, it was also harmful because obviously Brian Callan's been accused of rape. He's tied to flipping Brendan Shaw when they're firing a kid and, you know, online they're fucking toxic. So probably when toeholds are putting up all these posts about their new shoes, stingray sandals, all this sort of stuff, they're probably getting all these troll comments. Yeah, right on the Instagram post. That's probably hurting, you know, their ability to market, to brand, to get deals on the line, and just you know, hurts hurts their algorithm overall. Like it's just annoying. So he's probably like, you know what, your cosign and your Joe Rogan association isn't worth it because I'm just getting harassed online because I decided to make a thousand. It's not a crime to make a thousand pound sandals. He can do what he wants, but because he's associated with somebody that people think may be a criminal, people are going after him. And obviously associated with Ben doesn't help either. So I think that's what happened. And the founder posted, said to him, Hey man, please let it be known that you're not involved anymore. We can't be having this anymore. So that's why he probably he made his public and kind of did him a favor. All right, man, I'm really sorry. I kind of hurt the brand. And he did this. And obviously those embarrassing clips of him going on Rogan and pushing a brand too hard one probably didn't do well either. But I think that's what happened because it's very strange that he'd come on here and just start announcing this on the middle of Find the Kid. It's very it's a very public platform for a very not well known brand, I feel like. But obviously the founder probably felt that like the damage was so extensive that he had to go on his big platform and actually say out loud, Hey, I'm not involved in toeholds anymore. Uh, please leave that guy alone blah 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 i think that's basically what happened so clearly brian Callan's not good for business like really not good for business which is really 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 insane to be fair because having that layup with joe rogan's association and just his history in comedy and the, the the things he's done in his career it's such a weird fall from grace to be in a position now where like brands are asking you to de-invest because you're hurting them online and stuff with your reputation and what you're known for it's absolutely tragic but hey what can you do? What can you do?